So in continuing these talks on the four foundations of mindfulness, the topic for today is the third foundation, uh, the mindfulness of mindfulness of mind or mindfulness of mind states. And um, what's interesting about the f- second foundation, the mindfulness of feelings and mindfulness of mind, uh, both of them make a distinction that um, is quite useful for uh, the deepening or the f- filling out of the, the path to liberation, to really to move towards more and more freedom from suffering. And, and, um, and this distinction is, um, in my language, is that the distinction between that which is surface material and that which is deep down or deep within and um, kind of the deep within our very quality of being, of who we are. Not who we are, but a quality of being, quality of the deeper quality of heart in which we live. Something like that. So which is shallow and what is deep within us. And uh, so in the feelings, what I didn't talk about yesterday, whereas there's three kind of common denominators of all feelings, and those denominators are pleasant, unpleasant, and neither pleasant or unpleasant. There's also the distinction that's made between those feelings that have those three common denominators, which are of the flesh. We might say in in modern English, um, skin deep in a sense. And uh, and those which are um, uh, not of the flesh, those which are deep inside, and uh, so some feelings, like if you get, um, if you, um, you know, if you eat something nice and tasty, they, um, that would be of the flesh, of the sk- only skin deep. It only has to do with the taste for the most part. And, uh, or if you um, uh, touch some very nice, smooth, wonderful surface, and maybe velvet or something, it feels so nice, and the pleasure there. It's very nice, not to diminish the niceness of it, but it's much more skin deep. It's more like the sense, senses have been stimulated. That which is deeper doesn't belong to the senses that are kind of on the surface of things, the skin, the eyes, the ears, but some deeper quality, almost something that wells up from within. It's a kind of a way in which the inner life gets organized or gets opened or gets into harmony. And, um, and it's, that also can be pleasant, unpleasant, and neither pleasant or unpleasant. And mostly the Buddha, for the path to liberation, when he talks about this um, not of the flesh, the deep feelings, he's talking about those which are pleasant, that open up to deeper and deeper states. There are some difficult ones that come in, uh, uh, difficult, unpleasant uh, feelings that come from this also. That's part of the practice. And probably any spiritual practice involves great challenges. And if it didn't, it wouldn't be a spiritual path. But the Buddha emphasizes that as the practice goes deeper, that the spiritual feelings, the inner feelings, those not of the flesh, uh, kind of open up more and more. Um, now, in the in the mind, in the foundation, third foundation, there's also a distinction between the sh- what's shallow, in a sense, in my language, and that which is deeper, or that which is um, just visitors, and that which really uh, characterizes our, our state of being. And um, so the first, uh, the more shallow ones, it's greed, hatred, and delusion. And these are kind of states the Buddha refers to as just visitors to the mind. And in fact, when uh, in the instructions for mindfulness of greed, hate, and delusion, the Buddha says, uh, recognize that this is a mind with greed, a mind with um, hatred or aversion, a mind with delusion. And as soon as you say with, it means it's not the whole thing. It's not a mind that's greedy. It's a mind that has some greed in it. Um, And the reason why uh, this is important is has to do with mindfulness becoming strong. To be able to kind of be mindful, to observe, to see clearly uh, greed operating in the operating, uh, the part of the mind that sees it, that knows it, is not greedy. It's just knowing it. And because that is there, 
you can't say the whole mind is greedy. It's just a mind with greed. It might predominate, but it's not the whole thing. And this kind of cracks open the possibility of further freedom. The mindfulness itself is a kind of freedom, in this case, like freedom from greed, and that's beginning to appreciate movement towards greater and greater freedom. And in fact, this instructions for is not only to know a mind that is with greed, but also to know a mind that is without greed. Uh, and um, the, uh, uh, there's something about recognizing, again, being f- the freedom, the absence, the freedom from afflictive emotions, which keeps opening the door of freedom for us. And it's that opening up freedom, which is such a big part of the Eightfold Path. For those who have a taste of freedom, it's just a matter of expanding it and expanding it. And the Eightfold Path is a description for how to do that. For those who uh, haven't had a taste of freedom, they're getting, getting a little bit of here if the mindfulness is strong. A mind wi- without greed, to recognize to recognizing that. So, w- without hatred and without delusion. And then the second one, that which is deep, uh, or that has, has to do with qualities of, the, of our deepest being or how we are in some deep way, the quality of our heart. Um, the word with is not used anymore. Here, we're recognizing that there's a mind which is um, uh, recognizing if the mind is um, expansive or not, or the mind is concentrated or not, or if the mind is... Um, uh, exalted or not, or if the mind is liberated or not. And, um, and here, because there's no with, the whole quality, the whole state of being, mind, heart, is characterized by being expansive, by being um, uh, concentrated. Uh, uni- actually, I like the word unified for concentration, samadhi. Uh, it's not exactly the word samadhi, but that's a footnote I won't go into. And, um, and then there's the um, uh, exalted mind, and then there's the liberated mind. And um, as we get settled, and following the path of practice, as we get concentrated and really being settled in the present moment, this, the quality of the mind starts becoming unconstricted, uncontracted. It's no longer so narrow or tight and caught up with its preoccupations. And a mind which is not caught in its preoccupations begins feeling like it has space around it or is the space that's around us. It feels, sometimes it's called big mind, expansive mind or spacious mind. And it's possible to feel like there's lots of room in the mind. And then we get caught up in some good concern, like good greed, hatred, and delusion, and it all kind of gets collapses and we get tight and narrow and small. And so there's a sense of the expansive mind, the open mind, that's kind of almost coterminous with space, the space around us. And to feel the mind expand outwards uh, into that space around us is this big mind. The concentrated mind, the unified mind, or the really settled mind, stable mind, depending how this word is translated, um, is again also a wonderful feeling of just being really um, whole, whole and settled. And uh, it's not something that's with us, it becomes us. And now we can say these things that it's more, more the whole state. We don't say it a mind with, because when we're mindful of these states, it feels like mindfulness itself has that quality of being expansive. Mindfulness itself has the quality of being settled or unified. And mindfulness itself has feelings of being exalted. And exalted is a little bit my own translation of this term. But uh, this idea that there's a really uh, um, uh, wonderfully sublime, wonderfully uh, pleasant, and not just pleasant, but uh, exalted, really special, and, and um, uh, that comes from deeper and deeper concentration, deeper and deeper letting go. And the mind has these different states of mind, 
that uh, are exquisite, exquisite in their simplicity, exquisite in their equanimity and their joy and the happiness uh, that um, that just feels like, you know, just it's almost better than, you know, almost anything. And um, very much a feeling of being at peace and being at home and being whole and con- very deep contentment and deep satisfaction, deep sense of health in this exalted states that uh, are possible. But that's not the point of Buddhist practice. The point of Buddhist practice is liberation. And so it's possible to also know a mind that's liberated or not. We can know that it's not yet liberated. Um, And that knowing that is part of this depth of our life. Okay, there is a depth here, it's not quite free yet. And, um, And, but this is where I'm opening these doors. I'm opening up to this more and more. And so a mind that's liberated, and here also it's not a mind with liberation. Uh, mind, as I said, mindfulness itself partakes in this quality of liberation. Mindfulness, the knowing of it all, is part and parcel of this unrestricted, unlimited, unhindered, uncontracted state of mind, a quality of being. And uh, it's possible to know this and uh, touch into it, ah, it just feels like it suffuses my being. And so uh, in the second foundation, to begin appreciating that we have an inner life. And, uh, and the inner life is really the way the, the, to tune into that and become aware of that, not just what's skin deep, uh, flesh deep of the flesh, but really the inner life in a deep way is a way that we keep opening to freedom. That's where freedom is really felt. Uh, It's not free to do, like in the world, whatever we want. It's this inner quality of heart, of being. And uh, in the third foundation, the same distinction is made. And, um, And so this distinction perhaps helps us to realize there's much better things in this world than what we can experience when we're through our greed much better things we can experience than what we can experience through hatred or ill will, and much better things than delusion. And, uh, and we are the caretakers of our own inner life. And, uh, and then we start tuning into this inner life. And if it's not uh, expansive, we lovingly just know, oh, today it's not expansive. This is what is non-expansive, it's like but that knowing is part of the movement towards becoming expansive. We know I'm not concentrated, I'm not settled. And knowing that is the beginning of tuning into that place that can begin relax and open. It's not exalted. And rather than having greed or hatred for not having an exalted mind, just knowing that there's something freeing and opening and that being, it moves in that direction. And then liberated mind. And uh, sometimes the mind is not liberated, and we can know that. And there's something about knowing the mind is li- the, the knowing the mind is not liberated, knowing we're caught in something. That knowing is itself partaking in liberation, or it can partake in liberation. And so, let your mindfulness learn mindfulness, learn the quality of awareness that is aware of things. Learn how that can be found and be done so that it's, there's a freedom in the knowing, in the awareness. And that's your crack and your, that's the door that we want to open so that our inner life can sing, can be free, can be happy in a profound way. So thank you very much and uh, we'll continue with the fourth foundation tomorrow. So we are meeting tomorrow, Thursday morning, and um, and then Friday as well. Thank you.